Hello, uh, I'm Oscar Martinez from the Netherlands Science Center. And I'm, uh, well, I want to not present any um, instrument or uh, product, but more about um, how we can handle the different challenges and problems that, uh, that may arise when uh, point clouds, because uh, as you may have noticed, uh, several people talk about point clouds. When these point clouds start becoming very large, there are several rocks that will be in the path of uh, achieving any science. So for the ones that still have no idea what point clouds are, but I think that is no one in the room. So basically point clouds is a set of points uh, in some coordinate system, which may be a problem in, in Mars or any planet, which result from a sensing operation. So it's basically X, Y, Z in 3D plus other things. Th these other things can be from color to spectra, like in the previous uh, presentation, or uh, heat uh, values or any, any so any value on any other di dimension, and those are point clouds. Normally the acquisition is um, yeah, uh, from LiDAR, and the one normally that uh, there are some satellites that do LiDAR, and also from other types of acquisition, like basically stereo images from all these instruments. Um, point clouds in space are not new. I mean, the first, at least that I found, Googling a bit was from 94. Uh, NASA collected a point cloud with uh, 100,000 points from the surface of the moon with not so good resolution, only uh, 100 meters and 40 meters in elevation. And then from that moment, different uh, MOLA, as, yeah, uh, Heris and Mars Express all collected uh, either LiDAR or stereo pictures from which you can get a point cloud kind of, of data. But none of these um, missions I think they are really offering a challenging amount of point clouds at this moment, but uh, this may change in, in the near future, maybe in five, ten years. And um, so, so far, the point clouds in space have been used for altitude profiling, uh, digital elevation models, uh, monitoring, navigation aids. For example, the rovers use point clouds to know where the little robot should go. But um, but uh, there is also potential use for, for when you want to start doing 3D visualization and, um, and change a bit the way we are doing science because almost everybody right now is still stuck in the 2D and all the stuff that you see, but uh, other domains are already pointing into 3D applications. I don't have any, any example of uh, astronomy, but uh, for example, uh, we did one in archeology span where basically you, we scan a, a a uh, site in Roma that has some archaeological sites and then you basically, uh, there's a web browser that you can uh, navigate and detect sites of interest. In this case, it's only color, but you could imagine here that you are in the, in the surface of, of um, a landing site with uh, many different objects that are interesting for whatever reason and you could in 3D visualize this. This is obviously not for free because if it would be for free and easy, a lot of people would be already doing, but there are uh, many <clears throat> challenges in doing this that I wanted to point out and maybe talk to you later. First one is acquisition, and, and you have seen that in many talks, uh, it's not uh, straightforward to generate these point clouds. Then uh, the management, so right now, uh, maybe there is some of these people that talk about millions, but uh, in, for example, in the Earth, we are having already data sets with billions or, and trillions of, of point clouds. And those start to be challenging because it's not, you can, okay, you can try to put them in a Postgres database, but uh, good luck with that because, you know, these systems are not meant to, to process this amount of data. And there are people already, I mean, I'm, I am one of them, that we are researching ways of, uh, of <coughs> improving this management. So Oracle, Postgres, PostGIS, uh, MonetDB, Last Tool, Spidal, those, those are all tools and uh, database servers that, um, that are working on that. In visualization, there is also some, some PO3, um, the guys from ProGIS 2.0, they're also using PO3, but again, one thing is to visualize a few millions, but when you want to visualize maybe, I don't know, the whole planet, not just, you know, a small part, but you want to have a web server that you can, you know, in 3D navigate through anywhere in the planet, which maybe you, we cannot do now, but in a, in a moment, in a few years we can. Those are things that are possible right now and should be pushed forward. And yeah, that's all, thanks.